My name is Ejeta Malkran, for those who cannot pronounce it. I wrote this book, How to Lose a Country, uh, Seven Steps from Democracy to Dictatorship. I'm coming from Turkey. Obviously, we have been through a lot. I wrote the book uh, for those countries which are witnessing what we have been through for the last 15 years. We all need each other. I think Britain, European countries and the US need Turkish experience and we need their intellectual stamina to find a final solution for this political mess we're going through. I have some experience in right-wing populism and I thought I could be some help for those who just started uh, facing this political and moral insanity. Right-wing populism creates this confusion, this noise. It terrorizes the language, it terrorizes the political communication and therefore you, it is very hard to see through that. We didn't imagine that we would end up here at all 15 years ago and it took us a lot of time to see through uh, this confusion and this mess, what was really happening to us. So I kind of deciphered this confusion for people uh, to understand what they actually are going through. Because either you are a critic of right-wing populism or you are a follower. In both cases, you are in the game, you're playing the game and you are falling into that game. So in order not to follow that game and not be a part of it, you have to see the main mechanism the fundamental logic of this thing we are going through and this phenomena that we are going through. And then on, things get easier. Most of the people in Britain, and I have seen this, are not only desperate, but also a little bit confused. They don't know what to think. And they're also bored and exhausted. And this is the first, you know, symptom uh, of a country uh, losing itself. Because once it starts creeping, it doesn't stop. Populism is not an ideology, it is, well, there's ideological aspects in it, but actually, mainly, it's a political tool. They call, call themselves uh, the patriots, they call themselves the real citizens of the country. Uh, all of a sudden, you find yourself in this defense, uh, or trying to prove that you are real as well, you are a citizen as well. And once you start doing that, you kind of start losing it. So I try to tell people, tell the readers, okay, this is what, uh, the thing that you shouldn't do, and maybe these are the things we, we can do all together about this. I think the answers uh, will not come uh, from those political gurus writing 500 pages with actually three sentences, but it will come from collective thinking. And this book is a humble attempt to create that global conversation. Because once we get into that conversation, things will pre uh, reveal themselves, I'm like, the answer will uh, reveal itself, I think. And I think we have to first remember that we are political subjects, not the audience of this uh, political phenomena that we are going through. Because we have been made to forget that there was no alternative. So we have to remember that there is alternative. And in order to remember that, we have to remember we are political subjects, not only responsible, but also powerful. Uh, in Turkey, we lost a lot of time uh, hesitating to remember that. And when we remember that, it was 2013 during Gezi uprising, like in Cairo, in Tahrir, uh, it was, I think, too late. There is no one formula, but we are all looking uh, for it. And I think that that collective will create its own energy. When I'm speaking to people here, uh, when they read the book, they want to challenge me, you know, they want to challenge the book. Great. I, I'm not looking for a polite, you know, nice chat. I'm looking for a genuine, true, serious discussion. What, uh, once, you know, you start losing your country, it becomes really personal. So it's not about Britain, it's about you. You know, it's about you and me. And people keep asking me, where is hope? Where is the hope? I'm like, sometimes there is no hope, but you can take away the hope, but you cannot take away the determination. Throughout human history, we could never uh, remove that from hu humankind. We don't have to look for hope. And that search for hope, I think, comes from the fear. And that's the most important thing, uh, one of the most important things, I guess, that I want to say is, you don't have to fear the answer to this question, what can I do question, is be determined.